Hey, Andrew Kramer here, and let me introduce you to the new and improved lightsaber preset. I've added a few new features to enhance the realism of the lightsaber, but first, I should thank the uh, Star Wars fans over at TheForce.net for their excellent input on improving this version. I mean, if anyone knows what a lightsaber looks like, it's these guys. Uh, they know the Star Wars films by frame number, and that's not a joke. Now, another thing I'll be demonstrating is how to obscure the lightsaber as it passes behind someone or something. So instead of having this, you'll have this. Okay, let's get started. And first, I want to go over the uh, new features of the preset. So let's take our footage, drag it into a new composition. And what I'm going to do is go down to the animation presets, Andrew Kramer, and VFX to our lightsaber version 2. Now, to get these, what you want to do is download the presets from the website and take the Andrew Kramer folder and stick it in your effects and presets folder, and it'll show up here. Now, for the time being, this new version only works in After Effects 7, so if I can get around to updating it for 6.5, I will. But for now, what we want to do is create a new solid, and it doesn't matter, just make it comp size, choose OK, and take our lightsaber preset version 2 and drag it out into our comp. So now we have our new glow and all of our new features. So let me go ahead and go over them with you and I'll just touch on the old features also so everyone can see where we're at. So firstly if you select the name Saber Controls you can then modify the start and end point of your lightsaber. So in this case we can put one point here, another point somewhere off here. We have the show glow, and the benefit of this is that it goes a lot faster without it. So while you're rotoscoping, it'll just uh, make things a little smoother. Also, we have the color, so you can choose any color lightsaber you like, and just change it once, and it updates as you need it. We have the extend, so if we want to create the effect where the lightsaber extends, you can keyframe this amount, thickness, Pretty self-explanatory. And we have perspective. Now perspective is a new feature and what it allows you to do is create the look of the lightsaber being pointed closer to the camera or sometimes the lightsabers are a little bit thicker at the base and thinner at the tip. So that allows you to control that. Also you have the glow amount and the extra glow which calculate in a slightly different way that should be a little bit more pleasing. We have the shutter speed, which is now defaulted at 150. We will not be using this to generate the blur, so keep it at a high value for the most part. We have the light flicker, defaulted at 10, and that basically gives you a little bit of a vibrating glow. And we have now a soften control to make the lightsaber soft or sharp as needed. And new to this version, actually, is if you reset it, all the settings go back to default. So that's kind of nice if you want to get things back to where they were. So remember, anything that says effects below it, do not touch because that's kind of the operators for this expression. Also, it may show up as missing, but don't worry about it. That's just the way it works. Now, the main enhancement in version 2 is the way it renders the blur. In the old version, it was using some pretty complicated uh, scripting that basically scaled up each end of the lightsaber based on the velocity of the points. Now, in the new version, we're using After Effects' render engine, but this time using the expression to drive an alpha booster so that we can get this nice clean edge. So instead of having rounded edges here, you actually come up with something a little bit more um, pleasing. Now, to increase the motion blur in version 2, what you need to do is change the composition settings and go to the advanced tab and increase the shutter angle. So if you want more, make it about 300 and that will uh, cause more blur to streak uh, as your effect goes on. However, um, I do recommend that you keep it within reason and pretty much try to match your actual scene. So After Effects defaults this value at 180 and that seems to be a pretty good value for most cases. Also, if you want your lightsaber to be less intense color-wise, just bring the color down closer to black and that will sort of dim it out 
based on this screen transfer mode. So that's just a nice way to get the look you're after. Okay, let's go ahead and start animating our lightsaber. So what I want to do is set a keyframe for the start and end position and basically just move these as needed across the entire animation. And you can hit page down and page up to cycle frame by frame as the animation goes on. Now, I will point out this. In the new version, it'll actually work better for you if you start from the end of the animation and work backwards. And the reason why is because it will calculate the motion blur and you'll be able to easily line up the lightsaber. So now before I move on, the new version uses After Effects' built-in motion blur. So make sure you turn the motion blur on for your saber layer as well as the composition. Then we're going to keyframe the start and end position at the end of the animation because it'll just work better. You can do it at the beginning, but you might be going back and forth a little bit more. And then I'm going to use page up and cycle through the animation. And what that's going to do is automatically show the blur per frame. And that way I can easily line it up because with the new version, it's more accurate. However, the points don't necessarily go at the very beginning or the very end of the lightsaber because you want to compensate for the blur so that it's in between as the frames move on. So in this case, now in this case, the end position is in line with the lightsaber. However, our blur is back timed. So what we want to do is move that forward so that it covers over the lightsaber. And that way it just looks a little bit better. We'll keep on moving through it and just make adjustments to each of the points as needed. Okay, now once you're done, you should have something like this. And that looks pretty good. And of course, you can go here and play around with the thickness if it's not covering the lightsaber completely or play around with the glow um, if you need to. You also may want to change the layer's transfer mode to screen. And the screen mode just works a little bit better to make the lightsaber more realistic, according to the Star Wars fans. And come on, guys. They know what they're talking about. I mean, they have to for how much time they spend watching these movies. Um, okay, so I'm going to hit zero. All right, so for the most part, that's how you're going to be doing your lightsabers with this technique. However, what if... Let's go back to a blue saber. But what about when the lightsaber goes behind an object or a person or a thing? Well, no problem. What you need to do is create an obscure layer. So I'm going to create a new solid. And in this case, um, we'll just make it whatever color, make it comp size. And then shut the eye off for the layer. And let's go ahead and name these layers. So we'll call this blue saber and blue um, obscure. And then what we want to do with the layer selected, we'll take the pen tool and let's go just before it gets obscured, so right here, and then go frame by frame to just after the uh, obscure is done. So probably right about here. And I'm just going to trim my layer to that length. Then what you want to do is draw a mask around the object or character you want to obscure, in this case, himself. So what you want to do is kind of outline it, and it doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of get in there and uh, make it look good. You can make refinements to it later, of course. And I'll just close it off. Okay, now what we want to do, if I turn this layer on, you can see it's just a layer that covers over it like that. But if I shut it off, we're going to change the blue saber's track mat to alpha inverted. And so what's going to happen now is the lightsaber is going to pass through that mask and basically obscure it in the area that it's covering. So, of course, this is a little bit sloppy. We need to kind of work on it. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead now and keyframe the mask. So if you hit the letter M on the keyboard, it brings up the mask shape. And what you want to do is just go in here and again, frame by frame, just go ahead and reposition the points once you set the stopwatch for the mask shape. And that will basically change it dynamically. So pretty much as you watch and just move the points so that 
it looks good. And we can go through here again. Okay, so let's go and just play this back. Now, this is a good way to do it. It basically cuts out the lightsaber, and if we feather the mask by hitting the letter F, we can feather it, uh, you know, four pixels or so as needed so that the lightsaber isn't so sharp around the edges where we've obscured it. So that looks pretty good. For most things, this is going to work for you, but if you want to take it to the next level, what you want to do is shut the glow off for your lightsaber and change the core color to white. And what you're gonna do is add the glow later. Right now, like I said, this obscure layer obscures not only the lightsaber, but the glow as well. So what you wanna do is pre-compose these two elements. And to do that, select the two layers, choose layer, pre-compose, and move all the attributes into the new composition. Then what you wanna do is come over to our VFX presets and instead of using the lightsaber V2, use the lightsaber glow. And it works basically just like the lightsaber except it does not generate a core. It only generates the glow. So you still have the same features but you're only gonna be creating the glow. And the reason why it's the same effect is because if you already have created the effect here, say with a red saber and your glow is just right, you can just select the name hit control copy, come over here, hit control V, and it'll paste it just the same. And again, you want to change the transfer mode of the layer to screen, and that way uh, your lightsaber will just look a little bit more realistic. And now if we play this back, you can see the glow actually covers over our character. Okay, well I hope you found this tutorial useful. I didn't mean to get into too many details, but I figured for those of you who are at that point, it'll help you to get to the next level. Um, but again, my name is Andrew Kramer, and uh, feel free to visit my website, videocopilot.net, or of course, you'll find me at creativecal.net in the After Effects and Photoshop forums. So take care, and I'll uh, see you next time.